Hey there everybody and welcome back to another AppGyver tutorial. Today I'm going to be walking you through the basics of creating a journal app. So basically what we're doing is we're creating an app like this where at your home page you can type in random words, whatever you're feeling, maybe thoughts from the day. It's saved to local storage so it's not out on the internet anywhere. And then you can easily see all of that information in the app just by scrolling. So it's designed to be a pretty simple app but you can take this idea and modify it and change it as you see fit. So before we get started don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Now, jumping straight in, I'll put a couple of additional resources in the description below, but basically just wanted to walk you through how easy this application is to make. Now, if you want to customize it, as you can see, mine just has a plain white background, black text. I have an AppGyver tutorial playlist on my channel. You can check that out as well. I'll put a link in the description. But what we're going to be doing, um, because there's tons of tutorials there, we're going to simplify this and strictly focus on building this app. So when you create your new app in AppGyver, you'll see on the right hand side here, I am screen mirroring the AppGyver preview app on my phone. So we are going to hover over and see the first two pages and this is really all that we have. So this is the home page of the application and it just says tell me about it. And then we have the text here, which is the text here, and then an edit button. So a couple things we're going to do first. First thing what we need to do is we need to create a data variable for device storage. So you can click on the data tab, click add a data resource, click on device storage. You'll name the resource, add a description, and then add a property name down here. Now at the time of filming this video, there are no errors or anything showing you if you have an invalid property name. So one thing I wanna show you really quick is if I put test space one and you click add, nothing happens. But if we take away the space and put test one and click add, now it appears. So if you have invalid characters, it may not tell you, but what you wanna look for is this white rectangular box here. You can choose your property types and add as many as you need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what mine look like. My resource ID is journal. The description's irrelevant because I don't really need it and no one's gonna see it. And then you'll see the ID is a default property. And then we have journal one, which is what I named mine, just had it as text. So basically I just typed in journal one down here, clicked add and clicked save data resource and it'll appear here. Now, one thing to note is every page on your app that you want this data resource to be available, you need to click the slider and then go to data variables and click add data variable and select the resource that you basically used or added. It won't be available on every page until you do this. Another thing to note, if you see the additional one here, don't worry about it. I'm not quite sure what or why that happens, but this is the data resource, so that's all you need to know as far as I'm concerned. So we have backed out and now we have created our data resource. The next thing is we need a page variable or what I'm gonna use is just gonna be an app variable. So we'll click the slider and we'll go to app variables and add an app variable. And I just named mine journal one. So you literally just click add app variable and name it and click save. That's all there is to it. I'll leave variable one there. I'm not gonna use it or anything like that. And that is effectively the background work. Now I'm gonna put a link in the description to a video that I have on saving data to device storage. The reason we're using this method instead of an app variable is app variables will be deleted once the application is closed. So if someone writes all this information in their journal entry and then they close the app, all of it's gone, which could be useful if they, you know, you wanted to have a journal where you could vent or something like that, but not very practical. So you could use uh, Firebase storage, but then you're going to have to worry about security. So for this, it's just device storage. So everyone can have their own personal journal on their device. Now, bear in mind when you're saving to local device storage, if you clear your cache data or potentially update the app, there is the possibility of that data being lost. So you need to make sure you look into that and notify your users accordingly. So we've added our app variable. We have our data variable. Now we need to build the application. So for page one, I just wanted users to immediately see the application. So that was really all that there was to it. You log in and <clears throat> you see, okay, here's the application. So what we're going to do is we have our text box up here that just says, tell me about it. 
that's the title box, then the text below it. You can drag it over. And what we're going to do is we're going to assign a formula to this. So we're going to click on the little lightning bolt. We'll go to formula. And in here, we are looking for this value. So if you go to data variables, you're looking for data dot whatever the name of your variable was with a zero in brackets dot the name of that variable. So that's really all that there is to it. So you'll see you'll have a couple. It's the very bottom one for me. But again, make sure the convention corresponds to whatever you named yours. And then you can click save on that instead of closing it. The next thing to do is we're going to have a button that says edit journal. And you can just drag your button over here from the left. And then on the logic for the button, I just have it set to open a page. So when you drag over your open page function, it'll be over here on the left hand side. So you'll see you have all of these. It's the top one. And you'll just select the page to open. If you haven't added a page, you can do so by going to the top left, clicking add page. Once you've saved, you will then be able to enable that navigation. So now we have page one built out. Let's go to page two. Now we have update journal below, which is just another title box. And then we have an input field. So for the input field, you can just drag over input from the left and you literally just drop. Now, what I've done from here is the value, I've used the function. So we just go to formula. And from here, we are going to assign the app variable that we made earlier. You'll see down here is variable one, and up here is journal one. Now this is an app variable, so it won't save when the device or when the app is closed, but this is saved to device storage, so it will. So we're going to, actually, I apologize, I misspoke there. So basically this isn't saved to device storage yet, but it will be. So we're gonna go ahead and click save on this and we have the app variable for journal, which will clear when it's closed, but we're going to set it to save. So now we're going to drag over a button. So you can drag the button from the left hand side and you can choose anything you're interested in. You can use any of these components because they, if I'm not mistaken, all have the exact same component tap logic. So we're going to select the button here and then we'll click on that button to expand this menu here for the logic. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag over the data for or the update record. And then we're going to drag over the create record. Now, if you were to bring this over and you basically just brought over a single, for example, if you put update, um, let's see if we're scrolling through, if you were to set the variables or do whatever along those lines, you'll notice that you, the, the app's not gonna work. So you set it to update the record first, and you'll see we have two nodes right here. So I've essentially just dragged over the update record. So it looks like it's about, let's see, near it's near the bottom. So we have this update record, you just drag it over. And sometimes it can be a little weird when it's dragging. Now, if you look at outputs, you'll see your outputs here. So the idea is output at port one, which if I'm not mistaken is the top one, basically is it worked. Output at port two is it didn't work. So for update record, what we're going to do is we're gonna click on it and connect component tap to update record. And then we are going to go to resource name and it'll it's gonna have you select your data resource. I only have one, but you're just gonna select the resource that you are essentially wanting to save. And then when you scroll down, you're going to choose your ID. So here, you're going to go to the formula. It's a lot easier to do it this way. And you're going to choose whatever your data resource is dot ID. So if you have tons of these, you're just looking for your, whatever your equivalent of journal one is. And again, because we added it on this page, it added in that extra one. You'll see it's zero in bracket dot ID. So I just double clicked it and it adds it in here and we'll click save. And then the last thing is the record. Now, when you select this, once you fill it out the other ones, you'll just be able to click here, choose data variables, and you will choose the corresponding value. 
So you're just going to see the journal app variable here. So here's a general breakdown of what we're doing. The resource name says we're going to this data resource. Then the ID is the ID for that resource to identify it. And then the record is what you're putting there. So this is your app variable. Now again, this is cleared when the application is closed, which is why we're calling it here before they exit. The next thing that we're going to do, because update record assumes that there's already a record there. If there's an error, it's going to likely be because there is no record, so we then have to create it. So we're going to drag over the create record function. So you'll see it's right here. You drag it over and you're going to connect it to the bottom node on the update record data field or function. So basically, when the component's tapped, it does the update record. If this fails, it's probably because there is no record, so we're going to create it. If the update record succeeds, we're going to go to the homepage of the app, which is basically exiting. So we will go to this data create record, and we're going to fill out the exact same information. So resource name, you're going to select the journal one resource or your equivalent for the record. You're just going to set it up just like this currently bound to app variable journal one and save. It looks a little bit more simple because we're not updating, we're creating. Then you go and basically the success from both of these is going to open the home page of the application which effectively is navigating away. Now, one thing to note, if you're interested, you can bring over the toast messages. So we can put up a toast dialog and we can drag the error side. And for the toast message, you can choose output of another node and you can choose the output of create record. And you can choose to show the code, the message or the raw error. And then it'll display that error to the user. In this case, I don't plan to do that, but that is an option. So now at this point, you can click save, and that's really all that there is to it. So again, at the end of it, you have the open page function to open the, the original page of the application, and that's all there is. Now, if you are interested, I'll put a link in the description to my how to create a social or sharing app playlist where you could add additional functionality to create a login page to this app. However, the one that I use is not very secure, but it is an option to consider. And that playlist does have a ton of other helpful resources. So I hope that that was helpful for you all today. And just to show you this in basically in action, um, there is a link in the description to saving to device storage to learn more. But when you back out of the AppGyver preview app, my understanding is this is effectively the same thing as closing the application. So when we go back into the journal, the fact that this is still here is showing that the application is saving it to local storage. So it's showing that everything is working. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.